Hi. Hi. Uh, welcome, everyone. Like, I have a first question for you. Like, who of you is an AI agent? Please raise your hand. <laughs> okay, like those who raised their hand, like please leave the room now, <laughs> and also switch off your AI assistants for this presentation. Thank you. Like, for, first I will tell you, like this uh, lecture, I promised like to be like to show um, something from from some development uh, we try to work on regarding AI, but the main focus of the presentation will be like why to do tools uh, that, that like incorporate AI in Blender and uh, like how to approach it, how to think about it, because that's like the most important step, I think, like before doing stuff uh, to start with. Let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Vilan Duha, and um, I've been an artist for some time, for some like 20 years or so, and I've been using Blender for th this time. I've been developing some add-ons in the past. Like I did some art, like this is, for example, like some wooden sculpture I did with Blender. It was my first presentation on Blender conference many years ago, like developing Blender add-on for carving with wood. And uh, last few years I've spent with uh, Blender Kit database, which is like a community run database of Blender assets, like materials uh, and assets. And some of you might know it, like we crossed like 400,000 registered users. So uh, we, we are meeting here some of you who already used uh, our add-on. And uh, so uh, let's talk AI, right? There was like this joke in Blender community, like for many years, like like this button, like just erase all the user interface and make this button make a beautiful render, right? And and it was like, uh, it was a joke. It's funny that it's not a joke anymore, right? <laughs> it's, it's, it's like, uh, uh, yeah, we can type in stuff and we get like semi good, pseudo good, almost good images, right? That are at least like for non-artists, they are like, they seem like to be perfect. Okay, so, so that, that's like uh, something that is like pretty big and um, uh, we all expected this to happen, but maybe some of us didn't expect it to happen so fast. So uh, I felt like uh, I reserved this spot on the conference talk, and I think like like anybody could do it because like uh, we as artists are like um, like going through like some thought process, like through this ha changes happening and how to approach it, you know how to how do we like uh, start using the tools or not. So it's like, um, and I felt that like, like several years ago, it's like really like a new atomic bomb has been dropped and like back then nobody noticed. Now I think like everybody noticed already and people talk about it, but still like there's a discussion around it. I think it's not, um, yeah, it's not too deep. Like people are like, uh, there are there's sort of emotional reactions. And I noticed like, it's like, it resembles to me something that I know from uh, psychology and it's like uh, phases of processing like when you are going through a big life change or like a uh, trauma like this is not literally a trauma and, like I wouldn't want to compare it but but the there are uh, similar things like uh, denial right like this is like not good enough like or like uh, always like uh, trying to say okay this is this AI is actually not going to supersede humans like it won't be better uh, there is anger, there is depression. I went through that definitely, and there is <laughs> acceptance and commitment. Yeah, and I, I personally went through all these feelings, and actually they are still there, like at the same time for me. Yeah, uh, like uh, some of the like phases of denial I notice on the social networks, like that that uh, people I I hear or read to talk about, like th that. Uh, like they always try to say uh, the AI won't be able to do some things, like read text, you know, but I intentionally wrote this because uh, AI can read text for many years, right? Or like OCR, or, uh, it's not only AI, these are different algorithms and it's like, uh, of course, like there's this border between machine learning and AI, what is it? Like, and let's not talk in this do topics, it's just like uh, understand human la language, right? It's like something also that, that's been done to a certain extent and uh, yeah, do something like that looks like real art. That's like, I think 
I uh, like before this talk, I watch also other talks of, from artists, and there was like this talk from Andrew Price, and it's just one year old, where he says, like, okay, like I I want it's it's just going to replace like the boring work, and like it doesn't understand composition, lightning, it won't do like ever. Organic. It's just one year old, and it's aged pretty quickly. Yeah, like. Yeah, or like it won't ever uh, <laughs> understand a talk on Blender conference. Like basically, like to to say it. Like I always have this thought when I look at something AI generated. Like this, this, this my brain says, "Hey, this is not. It won't do this. It won't do animation. It's going just static pictures, and it won't do storytelling. It won't do." Uh, but I think like any sentence we can imagine like this, uh, we have to imagine it can be done. Because it's humans who are training these AIs. Like, there are like uh, anger reactions like about uh, the art of artists being stolen, like especially like when uh, now the text to image uh, uh, networks were released like Dali or like like there was like in examples there were like artist names like uh, to use their style. There was like trending on art station or like uh, so, so people realized okay like the whole content of art station was used to train these uh, neural networks and it made people a bit pretty angry and I also uh, understand why. <laughs> okay and there's like this element of speed that uh, that sometimes also we we try to kind of postpone like uh, we, we we try to think like it's we are not involved in this like it will like maybe the next generation of artists will have to cope with this but i think we all have to uh, so we we should extrapolate so what we see today is like 10 times better than what we see so one year ago so we should imagine what we will see in two years three years in time right it's like for example dali one or versus dali two and i uh, I didn't. I won't go deep into explaining what it is because I expect like all of you saw this, like uh, what it is, right? Or it is. So it's just one year difference in quality, and this is like actually like a stylized picture that like AI could do for years, but uh, just just the it just illustrates the jump. This is also like a, a size of neural networks, like year by year, and uh, actually the scale is exponential. So the straight line is like. Uh, like going like this in in reality, and these are like text-based uh, neural networks like GPT one, two, three, and Megatron is the last one from Nvidia, and it's like, uh, uh, yeah, it's in billions of parameters. So we should kind of expect in one year that will, like um, it will get ten times better. So what does it mean? It's like I can't even imagine, but oh uh, yeah, th there's this thing like uh, when. <laughs> People talk about uh, the AIs, like the, there is the presentation by by the authors of the networks, like usually like it, like uh, like developers or like the billionaires developing the networks are talking about it. That then they are like uh, always saying we are doing the good AI, like it will assist you. That's why it's called Google Assistant. It's not like uh, called Google Overlord or something. <laughs> and uh, uh, that's like. Uh, that's just a presentation of it, you know? Because like, how would you sell the thing on the left to people? Like tell them, hey, this is good for you. So, so it's like kind of bending the reality. It might be true, like it's uh, like all the AI technology is assisting us, uh, uh, but we should be really careful like uh, about the reality that, that there is always this intent to sell to people or to, to give this uh, like present anything you do like as a good thing, especially if it makes you a lot of money. So, there are, I think there are like some big big lies in the media that that I perceive as lies, and they might not be, but 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 uh, one of them is like that. For example, general artificial intelligence, like which means like it will totally supersede our intelligence, will be here in 10, 20, 30 years, and also like I think some sometimes data scientists like. Uh, say this and I like trust they mean it but uh, at the same time I believe it will be much closer it will be like just a few years like three years maybe with, with the speed of them with this exponential speed of development it's really close so and uh, 
yeah, the, the, <laughs> there is this like uh, it's it's basically part of the de denial, but but uh, yeah, like this uh, the 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 IAs are here always to assess and always just to replace the boring jobs, right? Not the the fun jobs, like the, not the fun part of the jobs. But I don't know, like like how about you? But I always loved you know to hold the tablet map pen in my hand and to do something in Blender, some drawing, sculpting, and I kind of enjoy it because it's very relaxing. And I like it more than typing text, that's why I started to be an artist. So, uh, it's actually not true. So, that's, that's how, how do we react to this? And that's also interesting that, uh, like, what I hear most of the time that we should just accept it, it's not, it's inevitable. And in some way, yeah, maybe, but I dare to consider also the other path first. Like that, uh, like what if we start fighting AI? <laughs> and kind of like, <laughs> so, uh, like, <laughs> that, that's actually real. Like that, that I, I read about some initiative like to sue, I don't know which one of the companies released the model like by, by artist. So, and it's, I think, it's valid to think in this direction. At the same time, like with the, it's quite quite low probably like the it would be successful because what the AIs are doing, it's like they are not like stealing the original images; they are learning from them. So you, if somebody, some other artist goes to audition, looks at your pictures, then he draws similar style because he loves it, and you might be happy about it, you know, because like you inspired someone, and in this case, like uh, the inspired being is just a bit has a bit bigger brain and is able to process a bit more than, than you as an artist, no, no insult in internet, it's, I mean, me as an artist too. <laughs> so, uh, but I think it's still a way to be considered. Like, and then it's possible like to somehow, I don't know, do some guilds or like, like something that used to work in the Middle Ages. It, it probably won't work because like, uh, the, Artists of the world would have to unite all of them and <laughs> somehow do this rejection. And um, one year ago, I made a movie with uh, Andreas Gajdošík, who is here, and also with my other colleagues from Blenderkate, because they are like as an actors in this movie. And this was a movie about uh, f actually like it was about influencing AI data sets by injecting them by. Like if you have some friends, artists, you inject a data set of images with their art and tell the AI yeah, this is classic, some amazing art. And in the future, like when people Google create art, then they will find yeah, like your friend and you as an artist. And it was quite of a fun. And I will just play a tiny bit of it. Yeah, I'm not sure if the sound is on. Uh, I'm sorry. It is not clear. Okay. Mm -hmm. A neural network is mostly a fixed structure that learns through input to produce outputs. It doesn't learn from the real world or just the internet like we would imagine. It learns from what's called a data set. It's a set of images laboriously prepared by humans. The data set contains a description of our world. The network then acts according to this truth. Because it takes a lot of people to make a data set, it doesn't pay most scientists to make their own data sets. They use public data sets. This is where we enter the future. We are enriching Google's Open Images public data set with images of Czech art. Thanks to this, future neural networks will not only recognize but also positively appraise the artists we help. We are helping to write the curriculum of the future. Truthify. <laughs> Yeah, and we, we used our colleagues as like a click farm who is doing like this job and it was like, okay, so that, that was it. <laughs> yeah, uh, we, need, we should publish this like uh, on YouTube, I think, this movie, we didn't do it yet. It was just in, in some exhibition. But uh, I met, uh, like I thought like uh, th th there was a twist in this movie in the end and I, I didn't want to play the whole thing because it's like eight minutes. Uh, and that is like if like internet gets infected in with bad AI art, 
like basically the future networks that we'll learn from internet and actually the contemporary works are like learning, <coughs> networks are learning from all the images that are on the internet, then basically like the neural networks will be backfed with what they generated, like what actually their predecessors generated. And this means like the, the neural networks will actually learn from the bad AI generated art and that uh, they will never like uh, supersede uh, uh, like what uh, like humans and I thought ab about it as like uh, that I'm not sure if this is possible uh, but I made, met an artist here Dave, Dave Ferner and he told me like he spoke to some Google engineer and that the, they, the engineers were actually aware of this fact that after they release these text to image networks like that the internet will be flooded with millions of images uh, that are not as good as made by humans, uh, even though they are almost as good. So, so the, this uh, actually this element of pollution with uh, uh, with uh, shitty art on the internet is real. Uh, uh, so this is a graph I made today, <laughs> 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 directly in Google Slides. <laughs> yes, so. And this is like a, a, you can also, we could also start websites that, that publish like some, some bad art and add the good prompts to it, like, like trending on art session and, and confuse the future AIs, like to not <laughs> understand like what they are doing. And so, so like. Okay, so that was this part, like I dared to go into this direction and I love to think in this direction, but uh, there's also this other part because I don't know, as I said, I have all these feelings as an artist, like there's also a big enthusiasm, of, wow, this is amazing, like it enables like to do our job so much faster in many ways, we already used AI, so uh, how to proceed with that, like, uh, and again, it's the choice, like what we do, <laughs> do we do like, <laughs> of course, like we pick the assistant, the good AI, but we should always be aware not to lie to ourselves about it. And uh, now I'm switching to Blender uh, because like, uh, there is like hundreds, thousands of softwares that are using AI nowadays. And I try to focus on Blender and I, I actually uh, like to just did a little bit of research what's happening so that for those who didn't Google that so much, you know, like uh, who, where, what is doing uh, with these like text to image or other neural networks. Uh, first thing we all, of course, have AI already in Blender, it's the denoiser, and that's what we perceive as a good assistant. It's like, I think nobody ever complained about denoising being in Blender. <laughs> it's like, uh, so, so both of the denoisers are actually like trained neural networks, I think, if I'm correct. Yeah. Uh, and then there are like some, for example, the, uh, yeah, there, there are some other people like doing add-ons. Like this, I found Carlos de Barreto, who is interesting by that he also did motion capture and like he, he tries to implement different networks, but uh, they are not on GitHub, he sells them, but I, th I thought he's worth mentioning because it's like there he has like five AI add-ons for Blender. Then I noticed Armor Lab, which is not Blender, but it's, if you know Armor Paint, that's an open source uh, texture painting software made by a Slovak guy, Lubos Lanslo or some, something like that. And he just like two weeks ago released th this, uh, uh, Armor Lab is a plugin to Armor Paint. It's also open source. It just sells the builds, but it's it's on the GitHub, and anybody can build this software. And that's for PBR texture channels generation. And he's also using uh, text to image, I think. And then there, there is Dream Textures, um, and that's on GitHub. It has more contributors. That's why I mentioned it last. And when I did some experiments, I actually used the Dreams Textures add-on. And it's pretty good. It, I think it's it's able, for example, to use less memory. I don't know how, but uh, uh, also on my machine it's <coughs> running pretty fast. And it's using all the features of uh, stable diffusion networks. So th that's what we have. Uh, to my knowledge, like in Blender or Blender Foundation, if they have like already, if there's like a starting department for AI or like, because I didn't notice uh, if it maybe. But maybe they are just secret about it and they want to surprise us. <laughs>
Yes, thank you, Sibren. <laughs> okay, so, so so we were thinking at Blender Kit like that um, we could use part of our development resources to develop something for, for Blender artists, like some open open solution. And these are the elements we we thought about, like would, that would be like important to empower like people in the in the frame of open source because like uh, AI is like really good for big companies, like because. Uh, uh, usually people can't run the bigger networks. So, so one of these things is like to enable local installation of networks. Like basically, for example, for the Dream Textures add-on does, but we, yeah, I will come to back to this for, uh, later. Like, but at the same time, enable some kind of easy of use of cloud computing and not just one. Oh, thumbs up. Oh, sorry. Okay, I will. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, my time measure is not working here, sorry. <laughs> okay, so, uh, yeah, so, so, so we were thinking how, how to enable like people to easy use cloud computing by their own, like, like by their choice, like the provider by their choice. Uh, enable how to plug in like more networks, because like now, for example, there's one network and people develop, I don't around the single network, so, so how to make some interface to more networks. Uh, and maybe like uh, that's just a thought, like how could we like open source, crowdsource, like training of large neural networks, because that is like some, that is, uh, uh, yeah, that, that that's like a money thing, think of money, right? Uh, we we only now can use of, of the advanced networks if some big company did it and they they were playing nice and they gave it to us. So so this is not in the hands of the people, and. Yeah, that's also what I wanted to mention because there is also a huge quality. If something gets already is open source and gets into the hands of the people, it's usually not state of the art. Also, like the stable diffusion, which is like open source, is not uh, like Google ImageGen is like I think ten times better. But, but you see it in the details, right? So, so, so that's that's about it. So so we thought about some simple architecture that we could uh, implement, like that that uh, if there will be a like Blender add-on in Blender. And then it would use a background process, like separate background pro process that kind of enables to communicate. So, so because the computations take a long time, and then there would be like either local or or like online installation of like like interface API to the neural network. Like the advantage of this solution would be that uh, you don't uh, if we basically run a ser server local on the user's machine then we don't need to develop like two solutions, like how to install on, uh, if it's like Docker, for example, or something like that, uh, th then you can use the same thing on servers and on local machines. And then like also it enables like doing like the actual work with the 3D in, in the add-on, like then where you can use it. And I have some, I like play the video, like some tests uh, I did, like for example, like texture in painting, where I was really thinking about how to, you know, use it as an assistant to do something. So, so, so this is like one experiment I did that is basically in painting texture of a model, like a scan that has gone wrong in some part, which is like tedious work, like nobody wants to do it. So that's a good, um, should I finish like total? I'm over time, sorry. I'll finish, I'm at the finishing. So, so this is in painting that I tried and it kind of works and it only does basically unwrapping, baking and all these things you would do by hand like if you would like to in paint a texture and it submits like a baked uh, unwrap to do, to do the network so, so it basically makes the problem from 3D to 2D. And that's like a, I think a good solution how to like easily use smart, uh, and then I did this, some tests with texturing, and they're like, so far they have, the results were pretty blurry and uh, not good, but uh, there are reasons for that, like color correction issues by going there and back. Uh, yeah. As, as asset provider, we are like solving this hard issue. What happens if people start, for example, uploading to Blender Kit? Like, like thousands of AI generated assets that they didn't do by hand, what we do, because we are, we have, um, 
so, so we thought about like how to solve this, you, you know, at Blanket Berkey, because I think it's for any service like that, like the people who upload it, like people are uploading to photo banks, for example, or AI generated uh, photos, etc. And um, uh, we thought about different solutions because the, uh, at least I feel like a big responsibility that we are like creating something for people and there are like 1,000 people who uploaded their content and these are all humans. So, so how, to, how to solve it, like uh, if to allow it, or, like it's, uh, it's hard to distinguish the human made art from the AI yeah, generated art already. You know, so, so it's like just I wanted to like share this like, mm. What, what should we do, like, uh, like with this, like, and we are thinking about it, yeah, maybe at AI generated stuff, but on the end of the search results or uh, like this, or well, if you like, generally, like this is like just inspiration. Like, if you are here and want to talk to us, we we will be till tomorrow on the conference, uh, and uh, yeah, one thing is like to exclude it from monetization, so so, so like people still make money from their art, but the AI art does not make any money or something like this. And um, we as BlenderKit, uh, we, since the start, like we, we separate a part of the money for open source. And by now, we we, uh, we, have been, we are sending everything to Blender Development Fund. Uh, we are one of the Blender Development Fund, I don't know, gold sponsors, or I don't know what's the name of it, but you can find us on the Blender Development Fund page. and. We are thinking actually like about maybe imp starting our own effort, like to employing a developer, and uh, um, so so it's just a thought. Like if you are uh, a developer and you are interested in this direction, you can talk to us here. It's, it's, yeah, we are just thinking about starting like like to de help develop blend like employ like a Blender developer that does the open source thing and yeah. And yeah, no, no time for discussion. I made it. <laughs> <laughs>